let's go back to some serious business and this concerns the students in China the Ghanaian students living in China especially in the um, you know province where uh, it was declared that coronavirus started from and so I do have in the studios with me Daniel Lati he's a former national organizer uh, for Nukes China also a former student of Wuhan City that has been declared ground zero and he is here to speak on behalf of the organizations and the students who have been asked, uh, who have asked government continuously to evacuate them from the city. Unfortunately, government also says that it has sent some money, is working closely with the embassies and also the Chinese government to ensure that all students there remain safe. And so until they get some clearance from experts, including the World Health Organization, to finally evacuate the students, they don't think that it will be done almost immediately. But they are ensuring that students are safe. These Students, however, are saying that we don't feel safe and we want to come back home. Parents of these students are threatening government as well, saying that if even one student falls sick from any other disease, governments will have them to deal with. Good morning and thank you for joining me. How are you? Good morning and fine, thank you. I believe that most of the students in China are also logged on to our Facebook page. Just in case you know anybody, let them know that uh, we're streaming live on Facebook. They can join in the conversation. Let us know what the situation really is like on the ground as well. And we'll get in touch with one of them via Skype to speak to them about what the situation really is. But tell me, um, what has happened so far concerning your calls to evacuate students? I mean, government has said that unless experts give them the go ahead, they will not be able to send a chartered flight to get these students. How are they feeling about this revelation? Uh, I think, uh, I don't know, but I think there is a kind of miscommunication or misinformation in okay. the system now. Because um, I don't know if we are being toyed with or played with. Why do you From say the so? beginning, we were made to know that the embassy was working on a flight for all the students to be evacuated. That's what they told you? That was not even told us. Okay. We had a um, screenshot of communication from the embassy and then flight um, uh, uh, organizations. We're talking about the Ghana Embassy in China. In Beijing. Okay. Okay, so they, they, they gave a rep to the student body who was liaising with the student body and then the ambassador. Mm -hmm. So he was sending this um, screenshot talking to us about the fact that uh, plans are being far advanced. And so a flight is almost in and they are working on it and very soon. When was uh, this? I think it should be about two weeks ago. Okay. I have screenshots here, I can send All right. them to you. All right. And uh, so students were kind of a little bit relaxed and we we're hoping that something good will come out of this. Mm -hmm. And so then recently we had this information from the news that nobody is going home and so they should stay there and the fear of being affected with the virus, so they should just stay there and then uh, not even think of coming home. Mm -hmm. But whatever they need, it will be sent to them. As I speak to you now, it was 50,000 RMB that was sent and even that, it is not all that amount that has reached Wuhan city. When you say RMB, that's the, when you say 50,000 RMB, 50, that's RMB, their currency. That is so the is that currency. the 40,000 that was sent earlier? Or are we talking about the 250,000 that was sent recently? No, 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 recently? that's the money sent earlier. Earlier, okay, earlier. okay. Now, even with this 250,000 that has been sent, has a lot of issues. That money has not reached the student body. Well, well let's let's do this chrono chronologically. So okay. earlier, some amount was sent. I think about some, forty thousand yes. dollars or so was sent was to, sent. Um, you know, the embassy mm -hmm. to take care of students and to provide some food and protective clothing for them. Did exactly. they receive it? Um, students have received. I can mention that in RMB. I've not yet. Okay, no problem. Yeah, but students have received in uh, in Wuhan. They receive about thirty thousand RMB. Okay. Okay. And then the other went to the national, which was also taking care of other people in different provinces. Mm. Okay. Now, this money was supposed to be used for nose marks and other things. Even with that, I have a problem with that. Why? Because uh, I, I saw a news, I don't know, but the ministry gave a lot of nose marks to the, nose marks to the, Beijing, um, the embassy in China, that is here in Ghana. Okay. They gave nose marks to support people in China. And... The money that was given was to be used to purchase nose marks. As I speak now, that, that nose marks has not reached the student body. So, so for me, it doesn't make sense. They, yeah. It doesn't make sense that um, we had the nose marks and then we gave it to embassy here in China. Meanwhile, you gave money to students to go and purchase. And as I now students have not received the nose marks. So nobody from the embassy brought any nose masks no, to no, students no, 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 no. at all? It was given to students to go purchase it. Okay. And so it is, there is a shortage of that in China. So you have to now buy it from a different country. And as at now, the thing has not even arrived. 
Apart from nose masks, what else do they need? I mean, to protect themselves, because everybody seems to be talking about the nose masks, which yeah. I hear after a certain number of hours, it's really not as well, basically, potent anymore. Well, it's, basically, it's more about sanitizers, the okay. sanitizers, okay. and then um, more of protective items for themselves. But as it stands now, most of these things, or even none of the students have received any of these things. And the city has been uh, shut down completely. So that means that nobody's coming in, nobody's going out. The reality is that Asad now is a ghost town. Nobody is moving out, nobody is going in. But at least they allow one person per household to step out every week, once a week, it to depends, get some food, right? Even with that, it depends on the institution. Let me, let me speak to, um, we, we have someone on Skype right now, and I'm going to be speaking to him just to find out from him as well. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. I hope you can hear us. Yeah, good evening from here. I can hear you. Okay, okay. It's good evening. evening. That, what time is it there, by the way? Must be it's late. It's 5 p.m. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. in the evening. Yes, please. Okay. Sorry, can I quickly get your name? Um, I, I couldn't get that earlier. My name is Michael Adney. I'm the vice president of Nukes Wuhan. Okay. Not Nukes, Nukes. Nah. What's the situation like for the students in Wuhan at the moment? Are you allowed to go out? Do you have enough food? Is anybody speaking to you as to what the plans are for the future? Yeah, so at the moment, we are very disappointed. We, are, we feel very abandoned. And let me use the word even rejected by our government and the people because... At the moment, we are basically under house arrest, as you said. We are not allowed to even leave our house. So in terms of food supply, there are some selected universities, three out of the 22 universities that we have Ghanaian students that are only providing food to their students. Wow. The situation wow. is we are basically being treated like prisoners. That is the truth. We are told not to even visit one another. We are so much hopeful that our government was coming to get us as was announced that we'll be leaving on Tuesday or Wednesday. Then all of a sudden they are saying they want to rather give each student in Wuhan and Hubei province 500 USD. Okay. So the, we are having a very heated debate. We don't, majority don't need the money. You are saying the that it was announced, sorry to cut you, you are saying it was announced to you that you'll be leaving on Tuesday. Who made this announcement? From the embassy in Beijing. Okay. I, I, I've been participating in all our our meetings with the embassy. Mm. So the embassy mm. related to our national executives that they, they've gotten an aircraft, which is Saudi Airlines, and they're only looking for a third. Oh, well, sorry, mm. technology. We're still going to try and work this out. But as you can hear from him, they were told by the embassy in China that on Tuesday they would be, um, you know, repatriated back to Ghana. Unfortunately, that has not happened and they feel like prisoners. This is really sad, I must say. Very but government sad. is also saying that they are speaking to experts. And if the experts don't give them go the go-ahead to repatriate these students, then there's really not much they can do. At least now they're working with the embassy to ensure that everyone is safe in China. Is that not good it, enough? It's very interesting when we hear that experts are advising the ministry is not to evacuate the student. Aren't there experts in other countries? And the same experts have advised that you should bring back your students, and they have done so. So what is different from Ghana? Well, the question is, do we even have the facilities? Because if we bring them back, we need mm -hmm. to quarantine them. Now, maybe these other countries have the facilities, um, you know, in order to quarantine these people. We're talking about how many students in the whole of China, maybe about 700 or even more. If we're supposed to bring them all back immediately, mm. we all do know that our hospitals are not that well equipped mm. to even house these students when they come back. And so that might be one of the major challenges that the country might be grappling with, reason why they pre prefer to protect them there mm. instead of bringing everyone here. Have you thought of that? Yeah, my dear, the fact is that we are not saying that the government is not doing something. They are doing something. I would say it looks like they are doing something. It looks like. The, the fact is that we are saying that there is not all students in China we are asking for evacuation. Mm -hmm. It's not all the students in China we are asking for evacuation. We are asking for evacuation for students in Wuhan who are actually in the epic center. Mm. Now, even the students in Wuhan, it is not all the students in Wuhan who actually want to be evacuated. Oh, not all of them. Not all of them. Now, some of them want to stay. Some want to be evacuated. Now, those who want to be evacuated are the majority of the students. Okay. 
Okay, so these people gave their names and the list. The embassy requested the names, list, passport number, and all those, etc. They gave it out. And so plans were far advanced, as my brother was saying. That they were. And, and Michael, I think, is back on. Sorry about that, Michael. This is Michael Adi, and he is the deputy, um, well, vice president. vice president of Nukes in China. Thank you for joining us again. I mean, you were telling me about the fact that, you know, they had assured you that Tuesday you were going to leave. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Was there any other communication after that to let you know what their next plans were? Yeah, so yesterday we had a, another meeting with the embassy and they told us that government at the moment is not going to evacuate us. They are still considering to evacuate us when the uh, situation get out of hand. So at the moment they are going to give each student 500 USD to take care of ourselves. For us, that is a clear indication that the government do not understand our plight and our situation here because we are under a complete lockdown. We are basically under house arrest. So what do we do with the money? Are we going to chew the notes? We don't really understand. As we speak now, things are getting out of hand. Yesterday, there were more than 14,000 new infections in Hubei province. Hmm. So we are, yeah. it's a matter of life and death. And we realize also that they treating us as if we are infected or we are the virus. At the time, at this moment, no Ghanaian has been infected. And if we are coming, we are going to be medically tested. Mm. We are not going yeah. to be screened. We are going to be medically tested. Anybody okay. who has the infection okay. is not boarding the flight because yeah. they will receive treatment. So this is a preventive measure. For them to think that bringing us home is like importing the virus is a great misinformation speaking of being They're medically home. tested sorry again to cut you in but uh, cut into you but has there been any healthcare professional that has visited you know the various homes to test people to find out even though it's on lockdown to find out if anybody's showing signs and symptoms of the disease any preventive measures anything like that so far so far we, we've all been given thermometers and we are screened daily but that is screening. That's so it. that is different from testing. But the countries that have evacuated their students, especially Brazil, they were evacuated three days ago. Mm. They uh, mm. make arrangement for the student to be picked from their various campuses or locations to a central place where they are medically tested and then taken to the airport. And even at the airport, they are screened before they board the flight. Okay. So that is what is happening at the moment. But none of that has gotten to you. What about the food situation? Do they allow you out? Does one person have to go get the food? Is there even food available for you in the city? Food is available, but it's very scarce and costly. Prices mm. have more than tripled. Wow. So what we are doing right now is we are trying to be there for each other. But there are some situations whereby we have like only one student in a university. And Wuhan is very big. It's like Accra times four. Wow. And we have universities wow. crisscrossing the uh, city. So it's very difficult to try to, I mean, meet people, people's material needs. So what they are doing is that they, like you said, they put money or resources together for someone to go to the supermarket to buy the goods, which is very, very dangerous because now there are only few supermarkets that are operational. That means there are a lot of people trunking to this supermarket to queue up. And it's dangerous because you can get the a virus during that period. Mm -hmm. And if you are not lucky, and later it is identified that somebody went there at the same time that you were there, and the person has the virus, it means they will trace you and they will quarantine you. And there are so many problems with the way they are quarantining people because they group them at stadium or indoor sporting facilities so there are a lot of people like in thousands that are quarantined together so if you are not even get you've not been infected you can contract the virus during the quarantine process yeah yeah, yeah. This, this is very serious and 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 this is sad i mean so at this point that government is saying that you know they are not going to evacuate students just yet um what 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 do you think can be done or what are you asking for and what can we do to ensure that at least you are protected whilst you are there? 
until the decision changes along the line? I think right now we are, we are advising our students to stay indoors as much as possible, even though it comes with its own consequences. That they are students who are depressed, they are students who are battling various forms of panic and emotional uh, panic attacks and emotional breakdowns. So we encouraging them, and on top of that, some are also starving. They simply don't have the appetite to eat, and there are some who are not um, infected with the virus, but they have various forms of other sicknesses mm. because we are in the winter but they are not able to go to hospital and it's difficult to even get medical supplies to reach them so we need prayers which we cannot rule out but we think the government can do something about this the, 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 the whole thing is also having a racial undertone because almost all the european countries and north african countries including mauritius and Seychelles they've evacuated their people. It's left with only the black people. So like even BBC and CNN, when they interview us, they ask us why our government abandoning us. Because it is reinforcing existing theories that the black man is not capable of managing its affairs or protecting its citizens both home and abroad. Because mm -hmm. it's like only black Africans who are left here. There are some universities where they are asking us, when are your government coming to get you? Because they are stuck. They, they are supposed to be on holidays, but they are now taking care of us because our government are not coming to get us. Yeah. So we want the government yeah. to make way for us. Where there is a will, there is a way. We are only 270 people. They can't tell us they don't have facilities to accommodate us. Wow. Well, Michael, I really hope that help comes your way very, very soon. But... Um, our prayers are with you. We're also trying our best to see what can be done in order to keep you protected and get you home safely. And so we pray that, you know, you all will stay safe. But thank you so much. That was Michael Adi. He is the Deputy uh, Vice President for Nukes in China. Ooh. And in Wuhan, pardon me, in Wuhan in Hubei province. And Daniel Latte is a former national organizer for Nukes um, China, also a former student of Wuhan, where the issue, the virus, actually started. What would you say to government at this point? Well, before first I wrap of up? all, I would like to make the general public um, understand something, that this has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with politics at all. So it would be so much a pain for us to understand that uh, we are trying to politicize the whole issue. You understand? It has nothing to do with politics. If uh, the minority has made a statement, that doesn't mean out of that the majority should get upset and say, okay, we are not evacuating the student. So one, it has nothing to do with politics. Two, the student don't need the money because the money is only dividing the student body in China. All they need is evacuation. Okay. Three, if they can't evacuate them from China, pick them from Wuhan where the epic center is and take them to a safer place. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because no amount of money or nice religious words would keep people calm. Exactly. Just take, do the right thing. And I also want to encourage the leaders. If, if I, I would encourage them to read James 1.5. It will help them in making a lot of decisions. Okay? Mm. However, I want to make it clear that the parents of the students in China are saying that there is going to be a press conference on Tuesday. Okay. There's going to be a press conference on Tuesday at the... Ghana Press Center, all right. and um, from 10 a.m., and we're inviting all the media houses to be available. And the parents are saying that even if the government cannot pay full flight for the students, they are willing to pay Support. half of the amount. Okay. So the parents are so much agitated, and they are not, they are not sure what is happening to their wards. Mm. And so I want to ask, if any of the ministers have their kids in China, and this is happening, do you think they will allow them to stay there even in this time? However... Even citizens in China are running away from the epic center. Citizens in Wuhan. They mm. are hiding and running away from Wuhan to other places. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so that's Daniel Latte, former national organizer at Nukes China, and also former student of Wuhan, uh, ground zero for the coronavirus. Thank you so much for speaking to me. And yes, a reminder that the press conference is happening on Tuesday, Tuesday 10 a.m. at the press center. And so um, you should be there if you can, so you can get some more information on that. And we hope that these students will remain safe until we're able to evacuate them or until the virus um, is put under control.